Shazita, welcome, honey. We're just letting our pals load in. We'll be starting up in just a moment. tonight? Yes, Mama, I hear you. <laughs> welcome, Ava. Welcome, Sophia. sure you got some water. You're up for our last class. Facebook Live to our private group set up right now. So feel free to use one, the other, or both, whatever is working for you. I'm going to try adjusting the lighting a little bit for the folks in the Zoom. I think I can make this a little bit better for them. Let's see how this goes. Oh. Yeah, sweet. All right, things are happening for us. series, our number six class in the fall series, but also uh, in terms of two other major accomplishments, this is the last class in a streak of classes that has gone on since uh, we went into quarantine on March 9th. So we have had uninterrupted dance class for basically seven going on eight months while we've been on quarantine. So this uh, will be the final class before I take a two week break for my wedding, which is my other super exciting news, which I'm sure everybody is not tired of hearing about. So when you see me next, I will be Mrs. Leslie. Uh, so that will be very exciting. Um, Esmeralda is running wild. So you may see the Sphinx cat moving through. I have the werewolves put away because they um, find veils, skirts, and everything else that jingles and moves through the air incredibly enticing. And really, they think it's all for them. So in the interest of not fishing for cats uh, and having them climbing my veils while we're working, we might see werewolves at the end. So. Oh, sure. Um, so Shazita put a little note up in there about asking um, about what kind of veil to order. So the kind of veils that we use for class uh, are silk veils. They are 3mm. The mm stamps for mummy. Uh, I think it sounds like the mummy, like the monster mash mummy, but I'm sure that is not the case. People that sew and that know about fabric are going to be like, loves lewd. But anyway, it's the mm is the abbreviation for it. I think the most standard um, silk weight is five, 
Uh, I think that ours are three. Uh, the ones that we use for in our class, if you want one exactly like what we use in class, came from the Dharma Trading Company, which is in San Francisco. They're a dye house. And they sell just plain white veils that you can dye yourself. Um, they have lots of different uh, supplies for doing that if you were interested. Uh, like, you know, hand silk painting and tie dyeing, batiking, uh, doing dip dyes, all those kinds of things. So if that's interesting to you, they have lots and lots of information to share with you about how to actually dye white silk veils to another color. So the reason why we use those veils in particular, and they are marked actually as like great for belly dancing on the website. So if you ask their customer service or if you look through the Darwin Trading Company website, that's where ours came from because the ones we use for class, I ordered a batch of like 30 of them. So they sell them in groups of 10. So that's the minimum number you need to make uh, an order from Dharma Trading Company. And those are the least expensive silk veils that you could possibly buy anywhere and they that I have ever seen. Um, they come hemmed, uh, they're beautiful. They are three yards and they're rectangle. Um, the ones we use for class are a little bit, they are three yards uh, this way. And then sometimes the, the length to the floor um, is a little bit longer than the ones we use for class, but I actually think it's to your advantage to have a shorter one when you're first learning. It's kind of like trying to learn how to spin a plate on the end of a stick. The bigger it is, the more unwieldy it will be. So as you go on in your veil experience, you may find that you really want larger and larger veils because you love the luxurious feeling or the weight of having all of that extra fabric, or maybe you'll become obsessed with wrapping your body up and unwrapping your body, and for that you need a lot more material. But I think if you're just getting started, it's a little bit easier to have a smaller one in terms of the distance to the, to the ground in that way. So, um, sweet. Uh, I was just checking on the Zoom. I made um, Heather a co-host. Thank you, Heather, you are wonderful. So she can let people into the Zoom while class is going on. So if you need to change where you're at, you're welcome to go back and forth. Did I answer your question, Shazita, about how to buy a veil? If you get on the internet and you look at belly dancing silk veil, there will be like a thousand choices and they have them. Yeah, you got a single from Dharma Trading Company. Oh, that's great. Okay. Okay, so Landa said she bought one for $29 and there was a price break if you bought 10. Yeah. It is the same as the one from class. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, there you go, there's the deeds. I actually think that price is really fair. And I think that you will pay around $30 for a good quality silk veil for the piece of silk of that size. Um, you can get them um, all over. They have them all over. I don't have any special person that I would recommend to you. I actually think the ones that we use in class are from Dharma Trading Company. And we had a lovely student in our class um, who hand dyed all of them for us. She just was a fabric artist and had an interest in doing it. So um, that's why they're all so similar. And they were dyed to that sea theme to go with a not shocking mermaid themed performance piece. So, <laughs> so that's why we have all this ocean blue ones. So um, yeah, Susanna Brown. So she did all that dye work. So some of you may know her from the Burning Man community. Actually, all of my first students uh, were from the Burning Man community. You uh, probably are not shocked to hear since I myself have been a fire person and I do lots of things with the um, kind of alternative circus and uh, art community out and around in the universe. And I had a Burning Man friend who every time she saw me performing with fire and belly dancing would ask for a class and I always told her that I didn't have one and she would say, well, when you do, I'm there. And I finally, after a couple of years of that, I was like, fine, you get five buddies and we're gonna do this thing. And that's the birth of the sirens. So, do do do, veil class and origin story. Thanks, Glory. <laughs> Still a friend of mine. So, um, let's add some traveling steps. Do a little warming up with dancing, and then we're gonna get into the meat, the heart and soul of working with veil, which I'm so excited about because honestly. This, I think, is one of the nicest way to work on your lines and your extension, to really think about how to um, emote both uh, height, length, and to fill the space around you 360 degrees. The veil will give you a chance to extend your body line and really also give you a way to work on the flow of your movements. It will help you connect the upper body and the lower body, or it will show you 
uh, where you are not yet connecting because if you have trouble with the stumbling over your veil or encountering your veil in surprising ways, it just shows you that you um, are not yet mastering the movement of the hands and the body in synchronicity. So it's a really great tool for that kind of feedback. Plus, it's so beautiful and it's so fun to work with and it gives you such great um, arm movement and it gives you such great strength in the upper body and an opportunity to really hold your frame and to hold your line. Because as much as we would like to blame our veil when the veil falls on our face or gets tangled around our feet, we always really know though, right, that it was us, <laughs> right? So uh, whenever we are encountering a problem with the veil, what we're really encountering is a problem with our lines, right? Or a problem with our extension or with the way that we're interacting with our veil. And so we're just gonna show ourselves some kindness and we're going to practice, yeah? Groovy. So we're gonna talk about three foot patterns and then we're gonna work them in to our veil practice this evening. I think everybody here that's here right now has taken the veil class in person before. So there shouldn't be a ton of surprises in terms of uh, the history of the veil. So I don't think that we'll go into that too much, but I just would like to say that we do have a lot of artistic freedom because it's uh, not a traditional uh, tool for ballet dancing. So that gives us a lot of freedom and flexibility in terms of what kind of music we want to use, what kind of costuming we use, and how we use it in our theatrical presentation. So without much further ado, we are going to visit a couple of different foot patterns that all come uh, in one way or another through Egyptian classical dance from ballet. So these are things that were brought in through the, uh, through the casinos, through Bada Hassan's uh, Egyptian uh, shows in the casinos in Egypt where they had a lot of influence from early Hollywood. So this is one of those places where the influences are mirrored back and forth. So if you have some ballet experience, you may recognize these foot patterns, but they are not actually executed in a classical ballet sort of sense. So in terms of using them for us, we're going to be doing what you may remember from ballet class if you ever took it as an arabesque, which is where the leg comes around to the back. Yeah? So it's not super important that this is a very technical movement. It just means that the leg is straight and the leg is behind you. Yeah? So let's just take three steps and then we'll have a straight leg. So we're just going one, two, three, straight. Yes? And one, two, three, straight, groovy. One, two, three, straight, yes. One, two, three, boom, yes. One, two, three, wing. And I'm choosing three so that we'll alternate on the right and on the left. So that's just a little chance for us to have this kind of extension. And you'll often see in different kinds of oriental dance uh, that there is this kind of straight line. So the other thing that we borrow a little bit from ballet is the passe, which means you will not see the foot up at the knee as much as down by the ankle, uh, which is less ballet and more Egyptian. But the same plan, yeah? So here we go, right? So we're just gonna step right, left, right. You got it, yeah? Left, right, left, Loving it. Right, left, right, boop. Left, right, left, pop. Great. So that gives us lots of nice long lines, right? Love it. Give me a passe. One, two, three, boop. Yes. So we're going to add chasse, yeah? Cool. So chasse uh, means chase. And so we're just going to get the feet going. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yes. Yes. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Love it. Bop, bop, bop. Arabesque. Passe. <laughs> Great. So we're going to use a lot of these long lines and extension today for our veil work. 
So let's go ahead and we'll get the body warmed up. We'll get a little stretch going for the head, neck, and shoulders. And then we're going to come in today with hopefully some things that may be a little bit new for everybody. We're going to try to add uh, a bit of flow into the movements that we have covered in the past. I think everybody here has had a number of really good chances to practice in person. Uh, things like the waterfall, the squiggle, uh, a toss and release, the basic hold. So I hope all these things sound familiar around the world. The matador, the eye of the storm, these are all of our um, things that we use ordinarily in our class. I hope everybody's like, oh yeah, sure, we'll see. we know all those things. All right, let's get a little warm up cook in. Oh, one more, yeah? You remember our three-step turn? Just, you know, our little bop, bop, bop. We use it all the time, bop, bop, bop. We're gonna use that too. So it's on our agenda, yes? So just this little turn, 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 little passe, yes? One, two, three, boop. Give me an arabesque, two, three, boop, yeah. And one, two, three, boop. Yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah, so you're getting the gist of it, yeah. So we have got all of these things we can mix and match. And if we get far enough later, we'll talk more about barrel turns and some other technique that we can mix in. But it's really about creating these like long, uh, light-filled, air-filled <sighs> moments. Yeah? Let's do this. <laughs> I don't think that you can have too many veils. If anybody was asking uh, if they should order more, the answer is yes. <laughs> I think it's really great to have them in lots of different colors. It's fun to have them in different materials. Uh, you'll use them for different things. They can be worn also like just, um, I use mine every once in a while just as a wrap, you know, for like a nice outfit when I'm going out. So there's no reason why you should just have one. Make sure you get yourself, do, 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 hold on, you know, yeah, boom, nailing it, mm -hmm. hold on, once more with feeling, back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Step the feet, you distance apart, flat back, head and tail opposite each other. Go ahead and slide the hips to the side. Head's coming around the other way. So the head and the hips are the opposite sides of a circle, traveling the same direction, the top and bottom of our giant hourglass. Other way. Nice big circles, opening up the hip joints. Pull those hips underneath, take that circle around, pull that foot in, just let the feet walk and walk, let the hips circle. Other way, push. Shoulders rolling right, left, right, left, keep them going. I'm gonna adjust this guy just a smidge. There you go. Hopefully that gives you a little better view in the mirror. And forward. Up to the shoulders. Back and down. Ear to shoulder. Just let this hand reach down from the floor. Bring that belly button and the back of the pinky together and then turn it open. You should feel some extra stretch here on the side of the neck. And bring that hand in and let your head fall down. We'll put your hand in the center. And then we're just going to put that other hand in the middle. Drop the ear to the side, shoulder plug down. And when you're ready, gently opening making lots of space through the side of the neck. Back in, thumbs, pointer, third, fourth, small fingers, pushing out, keep the circle going. That's it. Other way, pulling in and pull. Bring it down, shoulders. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Open the palms, open the front of the chest. Really lock it down. And then we're gonna close the front of the ribs like we're doing a crunch. So we're going crunch and then close. Bring those hands around the front. Really squish the backs of the hands. Try and keep those toes together. Lock the thighs together. Open the space between the shoulder blades and reaching overhead. Settle the shoulders down and open the elbows. You got it right here. And wiping the air around you. Excellent. We're gonna go ahead and get our veils. So we're gonna start off. This is one of my all time favorite veils. I think really it's the color that does it for me. So this is a three yard veil. It's a little bit um, longer uh, from the distance from like uh, the top here toward my feet than the ones we use in class by just a little bit. So what we wanna do with our veil, no matter how um, long or wide, what you have at home, I think three yards is the right place to start. I have taken workshops before on using veils that are four yards um, and longer. Uh, there's a wonderful artist from California named Shoshana who has a video called Fabulous Four Yard Veils and there are some extra things you can do with extra material. So if you become intrigued and you want to work in longer size, there is resource material out there for getting inspired about doing that. Uh, but for today, we're going to stick with three. Um, and my advice is always Point your finger on top, middle finger underneath, find the center right here and put that in front of you. And then we're just gonna pretend like we're in grade school and we're putting on our winter coat. So we want to first make sure that we can hold it taut with our arms extended so that when our arms are softened, we have this little play in the fabric to work with, but we could pull it taut anytime we'd like. Yeah, so we can work with that line. And then we're gonna put it on either by making the veil 
smooch, and then go back over our head or by pulling it on around like a coat. So one, two, around the back. And if you did it that way, your thumb and your middle finger should be exposed for zilpine and your pointer finger is wrapped. Yeah? Let's go ahead and do a little smooch of the veil and bring it from the front to the back. So to make the smooch happen, we're just gonna go smooch, yeah? So a little, and then you wanna push it behind you. So a little kiss and over. And you're welcome to walk out of that if you'd like to keep that from hitting you in the head. So that gives you like a little extra. So let's give it a little kiss behind the head. Yeah? And then a little kiss behind the head and over. Yeah. So you can also hold the hands longer if you'd like, and that would make it our karate chop, which is another move that we have used a lot of times. So the hands would close together and then chop over the head and then pull them apart. So the choice being smooch. Yeah. Or right here, show me the smooch. <laughs> or a chop. Yeah. So hands are together from the beginning and chop. Cool. Also going around the world or half of around the world. So taking that over the head and behind us. So now we have already three choices. Yes. So let's just go ahead and continue this around the world. If we just kept the hands like we were holding a stick and we could do it as one turn where the one hand goes over the head and the other one finds it and follows the same path, right? So this would be one way of making this go around the world. I'm holding it taunt and I'm just going stick, stick. I hope you know what I mean about the stick, right? Like, so I've created like a broomstick vibe by holding it taunt. And so now I'm gonna do something similar, but I'm gonna do it with loose hands. And so our around the world is going to have two crosses here. So I'm making a little puddle here at the feet and I'm gonna cross at the wrist and then I'm gonna open it overhead. And as I come around, I'm gonna go left hand on top, right hand on top and around the back. Yeah. So it goes one, two and around. I hope you can see the relationship between these two different variations of around the world. We don't usually work with both. One, two, and around. And then show me the stick, right? So we've got around, and you're welcome to bend at the waist if you'd like to hold that taunt. So it just gives you a little bit, right, of this long look. Yes. And then we're gonna pull the fabric at our feet. Love it. See the little pool? I love that. If you keep the pool nice and tight, you always have the option to, of like giving yourself a big entrance where you're like, ah, and then you could over the head, yeah? So <laughs> just another entrance to think about, yes? Okay, so already we have got four different plans, yes? Cool. So we are gonna add in a little swoosh move. This is a figure eight movement. So we're gonna start it just first on one hand. So I'm gonna put the other hand behind my back so I have a lot of extra fabric here to work with. And I'm just gonna swoosh in front and behind. I'm gonna try and make the in front and the behind equal. So I'm swooshing to the front and to the back. Yes, to the front and to the back. And I'm also leading with my thumb and I'm thinking palm up, palm down, palm up, palm down. Mm. Beautiful. Let's go ahead over to the other side. So palm to the sky, thumb leading, and again, swishing in front and behind, in front, and behind, in front, and behind. It's okay with me if you feel the weight moving in the feet. As you swish, you may feel a natural pull of the torso to get involved. Yeah. In front and behind. Okay, it's about to get trickier. We got a plan. Okay, here we are. And we're gonna go 
and swish and swish and swish and swish in front and behind. Make sure you're not forgetting to actually push through the air with either of them. Yeah, so we need to come from behind, come from behind, yes, push and push. It will help you more, it will wind up less like like a can can, do you know what I mean? Like if you are actually thinking about pulling from behind you instead of pushing the arms by your sides. So just for a little variety, just let the arms hang here for a second and actually just, just do that and let it swish around your legs. Like you have a little skirt and you're holding the bottom of it. And so that's just going like a little washing machine, right? And so now we're gonna pick up that move again. Yeah, and we're gonna think coming from behind, whoosh, whoosh, pushing from the back, swoop and swoop. Oh yeah. Things are happening for us, yes? And here we go, right, left, right, left, right, left. Things are happening, bump, 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 bump. Keep it coming, bump, 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 bump. Oh, we look so good, bump, 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 yes, bump, 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 bump. Okay, we're gonna turn it around. So turn, 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 give me a little passe. Yes. So the direction that we're turning, we're gonna be palm up. The direction that is behind us will be palm down. Yeah, so here we go. We're coming over this way, palm up, palm down behind, just creating a little shape here. Oof. And then switch, palm up, palm down. Oof. Yes. And then in our little spot, just side, 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 side. Yes. Ah, oh. groovy. Love it. Hi, Brigitte, nice to see you. All right, let's wrap ourselves up for a second. Let's come from the back and I wanna see if we can get three wraps. We just did one, two, three. Loved it. Okay, off they come. One, two, three. Cool. Let's go underneath. Yeah? So we're going to come under, get it right tight at your armpit, and we're going one, two, three. Yes. Super. Coming out. One, two, three. If you gotta shake it a little, nothing bad happens. Yeah? Cool. Okay, we have lots to play with. So let's go ahead and get a little music moving for us. And then we will take a break, we'll stretch our arms, and we'll add another couple moves. Yeah? Cool. <laughs> Okay. So let's go ahead and bring that fabric back around in the front. Let's start with a little review of where we're at, right? So we need to have our pointer finger on top, our middle finger at the back, we're in the center of our veil. We're just gonna go ahead and pull that at our feet. Let's take a little step through. Mm. Rolling the shoulders for me. We'll just let that pull and flick. And roll the shoulders. Fabric moving at the feet. Yeah. Pull it taunt, bringing it up over our head. We're gonna make a little axe. Holding it tight, no cross in the wrists. Bend at the waist, fold all the way as much as you want. Reach behind and in front. Other way, nice and straight. Let 
the whole torso go. Nice long lines of the legs and arms. And soft, cross and cross. Same move with soft veil. Hold it behind, right here, one side. Push and push. You got it, push and push. Palm down and up, really push from behind you. And around in the circle. Drape it across. Second side, pull from the back. Come and please. Yes. Right here at the bottom, starting to go right and left. Push and push. Through the air. Really feel it coming from behind you. We start to add in our little chasse steps. Turn and passe. Go. Go. Turn. Other side. Hold. Arms. And push. And thumb up, palm up, other hand down. Carving your space. Change, palm up, leads the way. Change. In your place. If you start to feel dizzy, if it's too much spinning, but I suggest to you, you can come back and just push. Keep practicing this nice low figure eight, right and left. Always thinking about coming from the back. Try not to short change the back half, keeping the intensity of the energy moving all around the body. Back in the front. We're gonna take that up and kiss. Yeah. Back kiss. Walk it through, around. One hand. Other side, pull. And change. Both hands, swish, and swish. This big skirt, yeah? Top of the arms, chest, legs, cool. Change, thumb up, thumb down. Behind the back, soft. Cool. Over the head, big extension. Feel free to add a long leg. Step cross. Step cross. Taking it back. Ah, hold this tight. And spinning from the top, holding it tight, as wide as you can get your arms to go. Big stretch for your body. Keep it taut. Other way. If it's too much, put the hands closer together. You're the boss of it, yeah? You can just cinch your hands right back in, and that will make it less, yeah? Bring it around. Mm -hmm. 
twist it through. Give me a little swish and swish. Yeah, I loved it. Let's let the veil down for a minute. We're gonna stretch out our arms. So let's go ahead and roll those shoulders to the back. Spread the fingers wide. I hope you enjoyed the swishing. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna swim through the air. Open. Soften our knees, pull the hands under and let your upper body drape across your thighs, back to the hands for each other, head coming from the floor. Inhale, exhale. Straighten and bend those legs. Three, two, two. Last one, small. Let the hands be heavy. Big circle. All right. Now push. We worked on some uh, Sabora inspired combinations the last time we had our veil evening. Some of you may remember the squiggle, a really beautiful movement for accenting. So we're going to revisit this. I was inspired to try it asymmetrically by the dancer Hina. Uh, her name is also Heather, she's from Portland. So the way this works is that we are going to come from behind the head. We're going to stop our music for just a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep one hand taunt and high while the other hand goes squiggle, 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 squiggle. Yeah. So without adding in any aerials or any extra, you know, complexity to the problem, let's just put one hand up high. And we'll take the other hand and squiggle, 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 squiggle. Yeah. So that's the idea. So put the other hand up for me. Yeah. And this one will go squiggle, 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 squiggle. So now I'd like you to pop both hands up in the air at the same time. And this hand is going to squiggle. So we're going up, squiggle. Yeah. Let's do the other side. Pop, squiggle. So let's do it a few more times here. So left hand extends, right hand squiggles. Yeah, keeping it going. Other side. Yes. <laughs> Fun, right? So let's go ahead and we can follow the squiggle down if you want a little bit with the body while the other hand stays up. So we're coming up. Squiggle, 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 squiggle. And that will make the squiggle like last a little longer as we sink. Yes. I love this. It reminds me a little bit of the, um, the Muppet, the little guys that go, right? Okay, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> fun. So let's go ahead and try and come from behind. So here we are back here behind us. So our goal when we get the veil up high on the other side is this hand will stay up and this hand will squiggle. Yeah, so we'll just do our best. Give it a try. So this is kind of an asymmetrical uh, squiggle. <laughs> Here we go. Boop. Squiggle, 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 squiggle. Yeah? Fun, right? Okay. Around the back. Let's try the other side. Here we go. Bop. Squiggle, 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 squiggle. Yes. So that's kind of a fun variation on a familiar friend. Nothing wrong with holding it taunt, yeah? And making this side make all the squiggle magic happen. I think we could also get a good effect from this if we just held it tight here with the hand up and we created this sort of in and out wave here on the bottom. So we would have a taunt hand and then also like a little bit in and out. So just pulling it in and pushing it away because that will create this sort of U, right, which is nice. Right. Groovy. Cool. Because you can also use these for turning open and turning in. So now we are kind of creating like a little drama here. And then you can use it to turn all the way and to turn all the way back. Yes. So other hand up. 
And again, just making a little squiggle, squiggle, but the squiggle is going in front and behind right here. Yeah. And then squiggle under and walk through the door and underneath and walking it back. Under, yes, and back. Groovy. So that's kind of a fun and pretty little way we could play with that. Yeah. Cool. So <clears throat> we're going to roll our shoulders and then we're going to get ready for adventure time. Yeah. So let's get rid of this for a second and just squeeze the shoulder blades and open the hands. And sink it down, back to the hands to touch, body to the thighs. And roll it up through the bod. Okay. So we're gonna talk a little bit about barrel turn. And then we're gonna imagine that we're holding this little cane right here. It's gonna be right here in front of us in space. We're gonna try and hold it here. So I'm gonna pick up this leg. I'm gonna put it over here on this side which means I'm gonna to turn toward my leg that's in front. So I'm coming down and I'm just gonna keep my hands on the same side as the screen and I'm turning over and coming all the way back around. Yeah? If we're going the other way, we're gonna put this leg in front. Yeah? Groovy. And then I'm pushing. Yeah? So, arms out, really wide, hands together, put your right leg across on the ball of the foot, squeeze your thighs, and then we're just going to drop that right hand down, left hand up, keep on turning, coming around, 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 and we're back to the front. Left foot is in front, left hand is dropping, we're coming around. <laughs> Yes. So we are going to have lots and lots of opportunities to barrel turn. <laughs> There's a lot of barrel turning. Let's stretch our arms out for a second. Pull your arm away from you. Really push into the back of your hand. Wiggle your fingers, bring your feet together. There's a lot of barrel turning in Cabellia. And there's a lot of turning actually in all of the Fat Chance Belly Dance ATS practice too. There's paddle turns and barrel turns and uh, many, many different kinds of quick half uh, and full turns. So we are going to be getting a lot of turning practice this year. 2021, the year we rock the turn. Yeah. And bringing our arms around behind us. If you can't get a hold of your own hands, squeeze through the shoulders, try and straighten the elbows. I have a really tricky time getting hold of my own hands. I know some of you are very flexible in this direction. And inhale, exhale. Ooh. All right. Oof. Okay. So we are going to try going from our around the world into this tight barrel turn. And I'm just going to hold a nice small portion of this in my hands. Yes. So I've got it nice and tight in front of me. You know, I was kind of hiding the eyes. And so here we are really tight and I'm just going to go around Right, and I'm leaning the body, leaning the torso, coming around, around. Awesome. Oh, this feels so great. Yeah. And let's go back the other way. So we're really getting just used to holding it nice and taunt and feeling the weight shift in the hands. Great. So we're gonna use a really similar plan with the arms, but we're gonna try to keep the arms in between the body and the TV or your computer, whatever you're watching on, yeah? So let's go ahead, we're gonna pick up your right knee, cross it over to your left side, and then drop your right hand and keep it pushing. Keep it all on the one side and come around, 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 and you're back here in the front. Yeah, and it never left the front. What? And some of you are like, no problem, and other people are like, witches! <laughs> How is it happening? So let's go the other way. We pick up the left foot, we cross that over, we're gonna drop the left arm, we're coming around, push, push, push. 
push, push, push. And here we are. So drop it down for a second and roll. People that have done my double veil workshop, this movement is also called the star. You can do this with one or two veils, and then oftentimes we break out of that and like pull into that kind of a swoosh that we were just working on before, yeah? So let's go ahead and do that same swoosh, but from the front. So we're pushing from front to back now, and we're doing a thumb up and thumb down, yeah? So pushing through space. Yes. Groovy. Love it. So you can see my palm is coming down and coming up and really pulling that eight shape. Yeah. And over here, second side. I'm just going to pull my hand over so that I've got the fabric out from underneath my feet because my least favorite plan with veil, especially with silk veil, is to step on it. It doesn't make your veil look nice. And it also gives you that terrible banana peel feeling when you're like, ah. So just always being mindful of how long your veil is, where the edge is, where your feet are. Keep it moving, front and back, right? Palm up, palm down, leading with the thumb. Just like when it was behind us. Yeah? So right here in front, love it. So now, same plan across the body, right? Thumb down, thumb up, thumb down, Thumb up, big swipes, whoosh, but the same plan, right? And other side, yes? So I'm holding here, thumb down, thumb up. Same awesome figure eight shape. Yes, cool. I hope you know where we're gonna go with this pretty soon. I'm pretty excited about it. Okay, bring it behind you, and let's get back into that swish, swish, swish. We're gonna to start to try to create what some people call flow. I think actually this word is a little overused, but I do, it kind of says it, right? So again, swoosh from the back. One, two, one, two, yeah. And hand on the small of the back, creating extra. Just same plan we had before, crossing in front, crossing behind, crossing in front, crossing behind. Second side, looking out for our feet. Crossing in front, crossing behind. Excellent. Okay. So we're going to bring this buddy around in front. I have a big dream. Yeah. So what's going to happen is that we are going to take this big friend. We're going to cross and we're going to go around and open and in front. Yeah, here we go, other leg. Push over your head, Shh. around, in front, open, and around. Yeah, cool. Okay, so let's fire up the tunes. Oh, we only have one minute left. Okay, so here's what's happening. Yeah, we work today on smooch. Yeah, we worked on this asymmetrical pop from behind the head, inspired by Hannah. We worked on a barrel turn with the fabric in front. Yes, holding it nice and taut, picking up that knee, turning that arm down toward that side, keeping it in between you and the camera all the way around. We also made squishes from the front. <laughs> Across the body, asymmetrically, same swish, thumb up, thumb down, right, on the two sides. And from the back of the body, and we are about to finish with a little bit of our magical flow where we mix and match all of these pals that we have just been working on. Yeah, so let's do it. Friends that are just tuning in uh, on the live stream or on the Zoom, we will finish up this little flow sequence and then we'll take a break in between the two classes. You're welcome to join us. Grab your veil if you got one handy. I know, we worked on so many cool things. We worked on our arabesque. Mm. We worked on chasse. We worked on little passe. So small amount of fabric between the hands. Yes, down, up. 
Two knee up, right side knee, pressing left, right hand down, turn, turn, turn. And then take that fabric around behind, in front, nice and taut, turning through the body. Right here in the front, left knee up, drop it over, push. Keep it coming. And turning around the body, nice and tight. Let those feet sway, let the hips sway. Turn, turn, turn. Pull the fabric, cross and cross. One, two. Yes. One, two, and hold. One, two, and hold. Ooh. Right here. Around. To the back. One hand up, one down. Follow the palm upright around, other hand down, working on the spiral. In place, swish and swish. <sighs> Pushing behind, front, back, front, and back. Bringing it around the front, making one hand under and back. And a little step over for me and into the hips, up into the shoulders, and right out our head. We're going on a five minute break in between the two classes. I am going to keep the Zoom open, but I will restart the live stream. Yeah, I'm gonna restart this buddy so it records separately if you wanna watch it separately later. I'm so happy that you guys are here. And we'll see you again in just a moment.